Hi everyone, this is the fourth video for differentiation, which is the quotient rule. The three previous videos would be linked in the description below. Before doing any question involving the quotient rule, you are required to know the basic laws of differentiation, especially what the content that's involved in the first video, basic derivatives. So the quotient rule is used to find the differential of a quotient that is a fractional term. So if I have y equal u over v, something of this form, where u and v are two functions of x, then this is the quotient rule, dy dx is equal to v du dx minus u dv dx over v squared. And it's similar in terms of what, what we did for the product rule where we identify what u and v would be, we differentiate each one and then substitute into the formula. So examples, example 1, given y equals 7x over 5x squared minus 2, find dy dx. So the solution is we let u equal the numerator of the fraction, that's 7x, and v equal 5x squared minus 2. Now I'm going to differentiate each one. So if I differentiate u and my variable is x, then that would give me du dx, and du dx would be 7. If I differentiate v with a variable x, then that will give the derivative dv dx, which will give 10x. And just to recall how I got the 10x from basic derivatives, it is of the form ax to the power of n. So we bring to the power to the front and multiply, and we subtract 1 from the power. So again, for du dx, dv dx, we are using what we have learned for basic derivatives. Now I'm just going to substitute into the quotient rule, so I have dy dx equal v du dx minus u dv dx all over v squared. So just substituting v would be the 5x squared minus 2, du dx would be this value 7, u would be 7x and dv dx would be the 10x. And v squared would be this 5x squared minus 2 all squared, it's important to use brackets. So I'm going to simplify the numerator by expanding the brackets. So here 5x squared multiplied by 7 will give the 35x squared. Minus 2 multiplied by 7 gives minus 14. And minus 7x multiplied by 10x will give minus 70x squared. And the denominator remains the same. For the quotient rule, there's no need to simplify the denominator. You can leave it as it is throughout. And just one step further, in the numerator, we have a 35x squared and a minus 70x squared. So 35x squared minus 70x squared gives minus 35x squared. And there's a minus 14, and the denominator is the same. And this is our final answer for differentiating this quotient. In most cases, when we are using the quotient rule, as I just mentioned, the denominator can be left without expanding the brackets unless there is a common factor in the numerator and the denominator. That's the only case really we may need to simplify further. But other than that, this would be accepted as a final answer. Number two, given y equal 3 cos x over 8x minus 1, find dy dx. So the numerator would be u and the denominator would be v. So let u equal 3 cos x and v equal 8x minus 1. And differentiating each one, du dx would give us minus 3 sin x and dv dx would give us 8. Using the quotient rule, we are just going to substitute our values. So v would be 8x minus 1. du dx would be minus 3 sin x minus u would be 3 cos x and dv dx would be 8. Our denominator v squared would be 8x minus 1 all squared. And simplifying the numerator simply by just multiplying the brackets. Um, I left the sign x to be multiplied. I'm just multiplying the minus 3 by the 8x and the minus 1. So 8x by minus 3 will give minus 24x. Minus 1 by minus 3 would give plus 3. And we still have that sign x minus and simplifying the second pair of brackets we'll have 24 cos x now it's important to have the brackets here around the 20 minus 24 x plus 3 if you leave all these brackets here your answer would not be correct 
because the sine x is still being multiplied by everything within that bracket. And this is the final answer for this question. It's optional if you would like to simplify further and write it as minus 24x by sine x plus 3 sine x and so on. But it's not necessary. It is optional. Number three, differentiate y equal 3x squared minus 1 over 4x plus 1 with respect to x. So just as before, we let the numerator be u and the denominator would be v. So u would be 3x squared minus 1 and v equal 4x plus 1. Differentiating each one, so when I differentiate u, again this is of the form ax to the power of n. So I'm bringing the power to the front and multiplying and then subtracting 1 from the power. And that will give us 6x. Then the differential of v dv dx would give us 4. And then we are going to just substitute into the quotient rule. So v would be the 4x plus 1 du dx from above 6x minus u 3x squared minus 1 and dv dx would be 4. Again, brackets are very important because the brackets would change your answer, would affect your answer if you have them or not have them. So expanding brackets at this point, we have the 4x multiplied by 6x gives 24x squared. 1 by 6x would give us 6x. Uh, minus 3, okay, I left a minus at this line, but I'm just expanding the brackets here. The 3x squared by 4 gives 12x squared, and minus 1 by 4 gives minus 4. v squared in our denominator remains the same. All right, simplifying the numerator, now I'm using the minus sign. So minus by the 12x will, x squared will give minus 12x squared. Minus by minus 4 will give plus 4. The first two terms remain the same, denominator remains the same. And now I'm just going to simplify like terms in all our x squared terms. So 24x squared minus 12x squared gives 12x squared. Then we still have that plus 6x and plus 4 from the numerator. Again, denominator remains the same throughout. And this is our final answer for this question. Number 4. Differentiate y equal 2x minus 1 over sine x with respect to x. So let u equal the numerator 2x minus 1 and v equal the denominator which is sine x. So differentiating each one, du dx would be 2 and dv dx would give us cos x. And using the quotient rule, I'm just substituting v which would be sine x, du dx would be 2 minus from the formula, then u would be 2x minus 1, dv dx would be cos x and expanding brackets and simplifying sine x by 2 will give us 2 sine x minus um, 2x minus 1 cos x. So we can leave it like this as it is or we could go one step further and simplify here by expanding the minus 2x by cos and the minus by minus 1 by cos. But it's not necessary, this would be accepted as the answer. Number five, given that f of x is equal to three sine x over cos x, show that f prime of x is equal to three over cos squared x. Now remember that f of x is another way of representing a function, such as if I have y equal whatever, we can have f of x equal that function. And f prime of x is written as f with an apostrophe and then x in brackets. This also is another way of writing dy dx. So in other words, this question is saying that if y is equal to 3 sine x over cos x, show that dy dx is equal to 3 over cos squared x. So f of x and y are interchangeable and f prime of x and dy dx are interchangeable. So this question already gave us what the differential would be and we need to simplify our answer when we differentiate to get to this point. So starting in the same manner, we have u being equal to the numerator 3 sine x and v equal to the denominator, which would be cos x. I'm going to differentiate each one. So du dx is equal to 3 cos x and dv dx would give us minus sine x. Substituting into the quotient rule, so v would be cos x the u dx would be 3 cos x minus u would be 3 sin x and dv dx would be minus sin x. And our denominator v squared would just be the cos x all squared. So simplifying the numerator, the cos x by 3 cos x will give us 3 cos squared x. 
and the minus 3 sine x minus sine multiplied by the minus sine x will give us plus 3 sine squared x. All right, so the minus and the minus here gives us a plus in the numerator. And in the denominator, cos x all squared is the same as cos squared x. Simplifying the numerator a little bit further, we see that we have a common factor of 3 in both terms. So I could factorize that 3 and in brackets I would have cos squared x plus sine squared x. Our denominator remains the same all over cos squared x. And then when we did trigs, we have learned the identity that cos squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So I can replace that bracket in the numerator by 1. So I'll have 3 multiplied by 1 over cos squared x, which is just... 3 over cos squared x and that is our answer that we are required to find for this question. Now normally if they did not specify what the answer could be we could stop at any point in our simplifying process but because they specified this answer then we need to simplify as much as possible until we get that required solution. So to recap a quotient rule is used to differentiate a quotient or a fractional term and we let u be equal to the numerator and v would be the denominator. We differentiate u and v and substitute into the quotient rule as stated here. And we simplify as much as we can. So our assignment consists of 12 questions. So feel free to try them. Let me know if there are any difficulties in doing the assignment. And thank you for watching the video. If you have any queries, or anything that you don't understand fully, feel free to contact me. Thank you.